Good evening, everybody. James Hancock here. I'm back to review Rambo Last Blood, the fifth movie in a franchise that was a huge part of my childhood. If you're still on the fence about whether or not you want to go see this movie, not to worry. I'll keep my comments very general initially, and I'll give you a proper warning before discussing any specifics from the plot. But if your question is whether or not it's worth it to throw down your hard-earned money to see Sylvester Stallone in action, once again, my answer is absolutely. Sly Stallone has still got it, and a cool thing's happening at age 72 where he's becoming kind of terrifying. He's still just jacked as hell and has these giant forms like Popeye, but his face has become really old and weathered, so this contrast leads to these scenes where he almost comes across more like a monster from a series of slasher movies as opposed to a series of movies about a Vietnam vet for whom the war never really ended. Much like the film Rambo from 2008, this movie absolutely earns its R rating with arguably some of the most gut-churning violence I've seen in a movie all year, although gut-churning might not be the right way to describe it because the audience in my theater was screaming and laughing and applauding in approval the nastier the violence got. And I have to admit that when the movie first started, I was a little worried about my Times Square audience here in New York because everyone was on their phones, everybody was talking. But the movie totally won the audience over. And by the end of the movie, I was actually exchanging high fives with a total stranger sitting beside me. And we started talking about like 70s action movies starring Sonny Chiba and Rudy Ray Moore. It ended up just being a really fantastic movie going experience in terms of how fired up the crowd was overall. But I won't argue that the movie is a complete total home run. For me, the only clear-cut home run of all five movies is First Blood. At age six, I missed First Blood in the theater, but I caught it many times on cable afterwards, and I was absolutely fired up and ready to go by the time Rambo First Blood 2 hit the theater in 1985. First Blood remains by far my favorite in the series, and I've seen it more times than I can count. Jerry Goldsmith's score alone is enough to make me weep during the opening credits, but the scene that I can't live without is that first night in the woods with several cops hunting down Rambo as it starts to rain. It's absolutely glorious stuff. But I'll admit, I have a ton of sentimental affection for the second movie as well. Rambo 3 for me is the weakest link of all five, but I'm a pretty massive fan of the 2008 film Rambo, which was directed by Sly Stallone himself. The violence and the special effects of that 2008 movie are just unimaginably horrific, and no disrespect to characters like Robin Hood or Hawkeye, but I think my favorite archer in movie history is John Rambo. He's always been good with a bow, but in the movie Rambo, he's just ruthless. I could watch him take down bad guys with a bow all day, but the moments that make Rambo a pop culture icon are shots like where he's tying on his headband while flexing his back muscles. That sequence is particularly good in the second movie, where in order to honor his fallen friend and ally, he adds Julian Nixon's necklace to his overall ensemble and costume. In any event, Rocky is obviously the more famous of Sly Stallone's creations, but I remain very impressed by the fact that Sylvester Stallone has played a role in co-writing all five movies in the Rambo series. If you were to look at IMDb and judge Sylvester Stallone's career solely by his writing credits or solely by his directing credits, he'd already be a total badass. But the fact is that he also managed to become a massive movie star along the way when he showed endurance across several decades. And I feel like it's time for folks perhaps to reevaluate just how impressive Sylvester Stallone's career has been going all the way back to the early 70s. Which brings me back to Rambo Last Blood. The movie is very solid with an engaging plot. We see that John Rambo has now settled in the Southwest and spends most of his time training horses, living like a cowboy, and trying just to be a good surrogate father for his niece, Gabrielle. But when she goes missing down in Mexico looking for her father, it's up to Rambo to take down some very scary dudes south of the border. And now it's into the movie throughout most of it, but it's not until the movie starts setting the stage for the climax where suddenly the movie finds that gear that really makes it feel like a movie worthy of the name Rambo. The last 30 minutes or so are intensely satisfying, giving us the kind of action movie that so rarely gets made during this loathsome era dominated by PG-13 entertainment geared toward the whole family. That said, if your kids like Rambo, take them. They won't forget the experience. So if you like watching Rambo setting up horrible traps, and if you like seeing Rambo hunting down an enemy force that has them hopelessly outnumbered, and if you enjoy watching the kind of grisly wholesale slaughter that would be probably much more appropriate in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre flick, absolutely go see Rambo Last Blood. Sylvester Stallone, he's a living legend, and nothing makes me happier than to see him enjoy so much success this late in his career. But that is all I can say without going into spoilers, so now's the time to bail out if that is a concern to you. So as I mentioned before, this movie finds John Rambo at a stage in his life where he's found some inner peace. He loves working outside with horses, loves looking after his niece Gabrielle. He takes medication to help keep a lid on all of his inner demons. And if he occasionally spends a little bit of time carving out tunnels beneath their farm or working at the forge, creating and designing all these new knives and weapons, these are just 
healthy outlets for a guy who enjoys staying physically active. But the movie goes to a really dark place when his niece gets kidnapped. She's bought by these two scumbags named Hugo and Victor who make a living pimping out young girls, doping them up with heroin, and then basically throwing them away when they're all used up. Rambo does his best to save her, but Victor and Hugo get the best of him. They beat the hell out of him. They carve a nasty V into his face to remember them by. They give him a nasty concussion. And Rambo does eventually find Gabrielle in this really cool sequence where he's just destroying a whorehouse with a hammer. But sadly, Gabrielle dies returning to the U.S. It's a really dark moment for the movie, but in terms of motivation, it gives Rambo all the hate and all the fuel that he needs to prepare for this war that's been brewing beneath the surface of the movie from the beginning. And for my money, this movie is worth seeing for two sequences. The first is watching Rambo prepare his farm for a siege, prepping the most horrible fucking traps imaginable above and below ground as he gets ready for war. He has a full arsenal of weapons, as well as like pits full of spikes, hidden explosives, secret passages of death, you name it. My only criticism of this sequence is that he never ties on his headband, he never puts on the necklace from First Blood 2, and his hair is way too short to resemble the sweaty mop that I expect from John Rambo. A little spray on tan and no shirt would have been cool as well, but Sly at this point, he's still so beastly and intimidating in his 70s, I'll forgive him if he chooses to keep his shirt on. But the main event is the chief selling point of this film. Eventually a small but very well equipped army arrives at Rambo's home, and from that point on, it is total war. And for people who enjoy old school practical effects, they're going to have an absolute blast. The best is how Rambo chooses to finish guys off. Even if they're like impaled on all sorts of horrible blades, he'll still come up and put a shotgun right up to their head to finish him off. And it's not like the camera cuts away. We just see like the entire top halves of heads just being completely ripped off. And maybe the 2008 Rambo was slightly more excessive when it came to violence, but I might feel that way just because... The most of the action scenes in that movie take place during the day in a jungle, whereas the bulk of this big action sequence takes place down in the dark in a network of tunnels. My chief concern, though, was that I wasn't going to get enough footage of Rambo with his bow, but as it turns out, they were simply saving the best for last. He lets the leader Hugo sweat a bit before he finally impales Hugo to a wall with four perfectly placed arrows. And then Rambo, in the best scene of the movie, slowly but surely walks up to him. Rambo's got bullet holes in him. He's got sweat and grime and blood. He's just a mess. Like I said, he's closer to the monster in a serial killer series than a soldier at this point. But he just looks totally badass. And then he pulls out that big-ass knife of his, and he takes his time, slowly but surely, carving out Hugo's still-beating heart before he just kind of casually tosses it aside. Like, to put it mildly, my audience went completely, utterly berserk. They were just screaming and laughing and cheering. They just loved it. My last note is that this movie enjoys a nice lean running time of an hour and 41 minutes. All of the movies in this franchise enjoy running times between about 90 and 100 minutes, something that feels like a kind of a lost art form at times. So Sylvester Stallone gets a huge high five from me for still believing in tight economical storytelling. I'll have to digest the movie for a few days before I know whether or not I prefer it over the 2008 movie, but in my opinion, it's stronger than Rambo 3, and it's a very worthy addition to this saga. What's funny is that we live in an era where there's so many aging action stars who are still kind of doing it better than the youngins. Like, you see guys like Denzel Washington and Liam Neeson and Clint Eastwood and Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger all still making movies in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. And it just shows how a great persona and a lot of gravitas and a lot of grit and just being able to snarl is really all you need, even if you can't necessarily do like a handstand or a split anymore. And I'm always a fan of seeing actors and or directors in their 70s still doing really good work. I mean, great examples like George Miller when he came back with Mad Max Fury Road or like Paul Verhoeven when he came back with L. But I love seeing the old timer show that they still got some gas left in the tank. In any event, if you enjoyed this reaction review, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you want to talk more, the best place to reach me is on Twitter at Colbrax. Happy to talk action movies, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Rambo, First Blood, Rocky, whatever. I'm, I'm there pretty much day or night or leave a comment in the comments below. But can't thank you enough for watching the video. Hope everyone has an amazing weekend. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.